In order for a rear shock to properly fit on your mountain bike, it needs the right mounting hardware. Mounting hardware is one of those things that often causes stressful overthinking, but really, it's extremely simple. I'm Mike from The Lost Co, and in this video, I'm going to explain what the heck mounting hardware is, how to find the right size mounting hardware for your bike, and how to remove and install it. This video will have three sections. What is mounting hardware? What size hardware do you need? And how to install mounting hardware. If you already know what mounting hardware is and you just need help with sizing and install, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp. All right, let's get started. This is a brand new aftermarket rear shock. You'll notice that there's an open hole on each end, which are known as eyelets. If I try to install this shock on a bike, it won't fit as the space in the frame is wider than the shock eyelet itself, and the bolt is way too small for the eyelet. To make it fit properly, you'll need mounting hardware, which is exactly what it sounds like. Hardware to mount your rear shock. Simply put, mounting hardware is just adapters to make a rear shock's eyelet fit properly in a frame, and every frame uses different sizes. Generally speaking, here's what mounting hardware looks like. There's a bushing that presses into the shock eyelet, a center sleeve, an O-ring on each side, and then spacers that cover the exposed part of the installed center sleeve. And here's how it looks fully installed. Trunnion style shocks are super common these days, which only have one open eyelet, and the other end, right here, bolts directly into the frame. Therefore, trunnion shocks only require mounting hardware on the open eyelet end. Also, some frames use an open eyelet design, and the frame uses a fixing bolt, which is the same size as the open shock eyelet, which does not require any mounting hardware. Now let's take a closer look at what makes up mounting hardware. There are two types of inner bushings, either metal or poly. The metal ones are most commonly used in RockShox mounting hardware, and the poly, or IGIS bushings, are more commonly used in Fox and Marzocchi. Now remember when we talked about that open shock eyelet? Yeah! The size of that eyelet is standard with mostly all modern shocks, including Fox, RockShox, Marzocchi, DVO, etc. This means mounting hardware is 100% cross-compatible between all of these shocks. You can use RockShox mounting hardware in a Marzocchi shock, or use Fox mounting hardware in a DVO shock, and so forth. Really, the only exception are Cane Creek shocks from model year 2016 and older, and Olin shocks from model year 2017 and older, which use their own sizing. If your shock is one of those, you'll need specific hardware from Cane Creek or Olin's to fit. If you're watching this video, you're in one of three scenarios. Scenario one, you have a brand new bare frame without a shock and you're installing a shock on it. In this scenario, you'll just need to purchase new mounting hardware since you don't have any. Scenario two, you're buying a second shock so you can have a spare in case your current shock blows up before race day or so that you can have two different styles of shocks to switch out depending on where you're riding. For example, having one air shock for longer pedals and one coil shock for gnarlier terrain. In this scenario, it's easiest to just buy a new set of mounting hardware for the new spare shock, so you can quickly and easily swap out shocks without having to fiddle with removing and installing hardware each time. Trust me, mounting hardware is cheap, and this is going to save you a ton of time. Now scenario three, which is the most likely scenario. You're just replacing your bike's current rear shock with a new one, maybe you're doing an upgrade going from air to coil, or because your shock is damaged and needs replacement. In this scenario, you can either purchase new mounting hardware to make install super easy, or if your current hardware is old, worn out, and just needs to be replaced anyways. Or you can simply uninstall your current shock's mounting hardware and then install it in the new shock. All frames use different sizes of mounting hardware. This isn't frame size specific, just specific for the year, make, and model. For example, a 2017 Specialized Enduro uses different hardware than a 2020 Transition Sentinel. This means that you'll need to get the exact size of mounting hardware that your frame requires for proper fitment. Mounting hardware has two labeled dimensions. M8 by 30 is a common size to use for an example. M8 is the outer diameter of the frame bolt that goes through the shock eyelet. J8 
Generally, you'll only see this measurement be M6, M8, or M10. The other number is the width of the hardware and could be anything ranging from 15 millimeters all the way up to around 70 millimeters. But how do you figure out what size you need for your bike? Well, there's two methods. Method number one, use the internet. Hi there, I'm Paul Perkinstein and welcome to the wide world of web. Our website at thelostco.com has a shock mounting hardware database, which doesn't have every bike ever on there, but we have most modern popular bikes and it's constantly growing. The chart also says TR for trunnion or open eyelet if the bike uses that. So check there first. But if you don't see it on our site, just open a new tab. Let's say you have a current model year Santa Cruz Hightower. Simply go to the Santa Cruz Hightower webpage Scroll down to the specs and you'll see they list the shock mounting bushing sizes. It shows the front uses 20 by 8 millimeters and the rear uses 30 by 8 millimeters, which is quote unquote bearing compatible. Although it says quote unquote mounting bushing, that's just other words for mounting hardware. And rather than saying M8 by 30, like it says on our website, it says 30 by M8, which is the same thing. So this frame's bolt installed through the shock eyelet has an external diameter of eight millimeters and the width of the frame where the end of the shock sits is 30 millimeters. So you need to buy two sets of hardware, M8 by 20 and M8 by 30. Depending on the brand or store that you find the hardware, it could be labeled as 30 by M8, eight millimeters by 30, etc. but it's all the same size, just labeled differently. Also, you notice it said bearing compatible and some mounting hardware uses bearings in the hardware for less stiction in the suspension. And this frame is compatible with that, so you can run it if you'd like. If your bike isn't the current newest model, look for a bike archive on the brand's website. Brands like Transition and Santa Cruz are great examples which show all specs of older bike models, including shock hardware sizes. If a bike company's website doesn't straight up list the hardware size, look for an exploded view diagram or a user's manual of the biker frame, either on the bike page or in the service slash tech support section of a company's website. We often find mounting hardware sizes for brands like YT in the exploded view diagrams in the downloads section of their website. And if it isn't listed anywhere, you can just call the bike brand's phone number on their website and ask them. But if they don't know, then there's method number two. Measure your mounting hardware yourself. So grab some calipers or a fine ruler with millimeters and either measure your current shocks installed mounting hardware or the frame and bolt. If you grab the shock and hardware installed, simply measure the internal diameter of the hole where the bolt goes through and then measure how wide the mounting hardware is from side to side. So I have this shock on the bike and let's say I wanna put this shock on and I don't have hardware in this one, I need to figure out what size I need. So first I'm gonna start by measuring the inner diameter of where the bolt goes through and mounts this thing in the frame, which is 10 millimeters. And then I'm gonna measure how wide the mounting hardware is. And this measures 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna need M10 by 20 mounting hardware for that new shock if I wanna keep this hardware in this one, or if I just need new one for that one because this is worn out. Alternatively, I could also just measure the frame and the bolt that goes to the shock if let's say this is a bare frame and it does not have a shock, I'm just installing a new shock on there. So I'm gonna measure the inner width of the frame where that shock sits and that measures 20 millimeters. Then I'm gonna grab the bolt that goes through the shock here into the frame and you know tightens down the shock and I'm gonna measure the outer diameter of that which measures 10 millimeters. So again, M10 by 20. So yeah, there's multiple different ways to measure this as long as you have some calipers or a nice little ruler that has millimeters on it. So now that you know what size hardware you need and purchase it, it's time to install it. This is an extremely easy job to do when you have the proper tools. However, it's totally doable without the proper tools, just more annoying and frustrating. The proper tools are a vise with soft jaws, a hardware removal tool, and a DU bushing removal tool. First, we'll remove mounting hardware with both styles of bushings, and then install both on the shock. Removal is most of the labor, and installation is much easier. So if you don't need to remove any hardware, you can skip ahead a little to the installation part. Real quick, we wanted to show you what little pieces are included in Fox and RockShox mounting hardware, since that's about 99% of it out there. If you have a different brand, it's either identical or nearly identical, but it's all the same principle. 
There will be outer spacers on both sides, an O-ring on each side, the inner pin, and the bushing that presses into the eyelet. Older Fox hardware just has one outer spacer on both sides, but newer Fox hardware has one large spacer and one thin crush washer on each side. Fox hardware uses the poly just bushing, but much older Fox hardware uses a steel bushing. RockShox hardware is about the same, but just uses one spacer with an integrated O-ring on each side and a metal DU bushing. Some really old shocks use two-piece alloy hardware, but pretty much no bikes have these anymore, and they just pop out by hand. All right, let's uninstall some hardware. Watch carefully as I do this, and whenever working around suspension, the end goal is to not scratch anything. First, you'll need to remove the outer spacers and inner pin from the hardware. First, try removing it by hand, which works on most RockShox hardware, and sometimes others. If it won't come off by hand, then you'll need to use the power of the vise to remove it. To remove your mounting hardware, take your mounting hardware removal tool, pop it in the shock hardware, line it up in the vise, tighten the vise, pushes that side into that side. It's going to catch all the hardware on this side and boom, now your hardware is removed. And now you just have the bushing in there. And then to remove this poly I just bushing, just take a flat out screwdriver, put it in the gap in between the bushings right in the middle and then just pop it out. Boom, half done. Same thing on the inner side. And now you have a bare eyelet. Don't worry if you slightly scratch the surface inside the eyelet. Easy peasy. Now onto a metal bushing, which is properly pressed in there, meaning it needs to be pressed out. To remove the metal DU bushing, we're going to basically put the tool back in like so, but the uh, other side, it's not gonna be put in with the flat side facing the eyelet. It's gonna have the open side facing it so that it can catch the bushing. Then we're just gonna put it in here in the vise, tighten it up. And that's going to press out the bushing. It's out of the shock and it is now in here. Boom, out. All right, now that that's done, you've noticed that we use a couple of different tools in the shop to make this super easy since we work on so many shocks here. However, you can use your imagination, imagination and figure out that you could use a couple of sockets rather than a proper bushing tool to do this job if you're somewhat mechanically inclined. You basically just need something to push on one side and to catch on the other. We are not going to tell you some magic combination of sockets to use as all different brands and styles of sockets are different thicknesses so perform this at your own risk. Just make sure the pushing tool is at least as large as the inner diameter of the piece that you're pushing, but smaller than the eyelet size. And make sure that the catching tool is large enough and long enough to catch the entire pin, but still small enough to sit on the shock eyelet so it doesn't move a bunch when it's in the vise. When using sockets instead of a proper DU bushing tool, you do run the risk of marring the anodized finish on the end of your shock, so please just take your time to do a good job or find a good local bike shop with a bushing tool to do this for you. If it feels like something isn't working, stop what you're doing to change your socket sizes as you don't want to force something and damage the mounting hardware or your shock eyelet. Now for the installation process, which is much easier. You'll still need a vise with soft jaws for this. To install these plastic eye just bushings, it's actually really easy. Basically just push it in halfway with your fingers, just like this. Boom, and then finish it by basically just pushing it on the edge of a bench, just like this. And then it's all the way installed in there. Then just take the pin or sleeve or whatever you want to call it, push that through and center it as good as you can. Then take the O-rings, slide those on, and just kind of push it in there with your fingernails to sit in the groove. Do this on both sides. This is gonna be so that contaminants like dirt and grit don't get in there. It's very common to have wider mounting hardware like this, which has wide spacers on each side. Simply push these on by hand and center them as good as you can, usually all just by hand. For Fox hardware, the outermost spacer has these little um, nipples on it 
And a term that we use here in the shop is nips out. So you're gonna face this with the flat side facing the shock eyelet and the nips out. These are kind of crushed beads and you're just gonna push those on by hand. That's about that. This is really thin hardware, so it's really easy to do this by hand and line everything up. However, if you have a wider hardware, you're just going to pop this in the vise with the soft jaws on so you don't scratch anything and just tighten it up a bit. And what that's gonna do is just center everything and you're all done. Don't scratch your nips. Don't scratch your nips. Dips out. Now before we go, we had some other special notes to mention. First, the frame bolts that go through the frame, through the eyelet, and thread into the frame on the other side are specific to the frame and are not part of the mounting hardware. And the same applies to trunnion shocks. The bolts that go through the frame and into the shock and any small washers between the frame and shock are specific to the frame and are not part of the mounting hardware. Also, some brands use proprietary hardware which is not available aftermarket. For example, many Trex use proprietary offset hardware which you must purchase from a Trex shop. Next note is that some shock brands offer bike specific shock models which include mounting hardware. Mainly this pertains to Rock Shocks who offer a bunch of bike specific models which includes mounting hardware in the box. If the bike model it's designed for uses bearing hardware, they are currently using a specific bearing eyelet and the bearing cannot be removed to use it on another bike that does not use a bearing mount. And last but very not least as this is very common, if your bike calls for M8 by 22 mounting hardware, you'll notice most companies don't actually make hardware in that size. In this case, you're gonna wanna go with the slightly smaller size of M8 by 21.8, as your frame can tolerate that tiny difference of the smaller size. You will not be able to size up and use M8 by 22.2, as the frame cannot expand to fit the larger size. This also happens with some other sizes as well and only recommended for when the exact size you need is not being produced. Well, there you have it. That is literally everything you could possibly know about mounting hardware for mountain bike rear shocks. If you need to order mounting hardware, a rear shock or anything else, head over to our website at thelostco.com where we have free USA shipping on any order over 49 bucks except for really big stuff. If you have any further questions, please don't be afraid to contact us directly via phone or email. Thank you so much for watching and learning with us, and we'll see you next time. Peace.